Hey, I'm Don LaFon, Professor Don, and this week we are covering two mod modules. If you have not watched Module 7 yet, go watch that. It's DHCP v4, uh, and it's the basics. You actually should know DHCP v4, at least the basics of it already, and we add a little bit more in-depth um, uh, configuration and uh, how to troubleshoot it. In this presentation, in Module 8, we're going to cover Slack, and we're also going to cover DHCP v6. I'm not going to jump ahead of myself and tell you what it is. I just want to let you know it is more challenging because, of course, you don't know these commands, probably, and because you have to learn both DHCP v4, Slack, and DHCP v6, uh, this is probably the most different configurations you're going to learn in any week this semester. Make sure you take good notes, make sure you put it in your tech notebook, and you'll be fine. And rewatch the video, or go watch some more videos online, or ask questions in the help discussion forum when you get stuck. We'll be there to help you out. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen with you. It's over here. And let me drag this guy over here. And let me... Um, let's see, I'm sharing the screen and I need to start the presentation. And then I need to drag this over here. This presentation should take a little bit less than an hour uh, to cover. Uh, so we should be, we should be, we definitely will be done by 830, hopefully a little bit before, hopefully before then. All right, so we're learning module A, DHC, of v6 and slack and let's get started so first we'll talk about um, how uh, we're going to configure a dynamic addresses allocation in the ipv6 network so we'll talk about global unicast address assignment and we'll explain how ipv6 hosts can acquire its ipv6 configuration now slack it will be explained and dhcp v6 will be explained and then we'll configure a DHCP v6 server uh, for both state full and state less DHCP v6 configurations. So uh, IPv6 GUI assignment. So uh, if we had a PC, uh, if we're on a PC, uh, we just go to the GUI and you can configure an IPv6 statically by just typing uh, the IP address in under uh, the use the configure IPv6 address, you type in the IPv6 address and the prefix length and you are home free, free. Remember, you also have to give it a DNS server address. Otherwise, your addressing will not leave the network. Uh, then uh, you can go to IP config on your host and you can confirm uh, that uh, D, that um, that it has been issued an IPv6 address. Um, in this case, actually, you're, you're seeing that it has not been issued an address yet. Uh, so um, it needs uh, to go through the steps that we are going to configure. The interface did not create an IPv6 GUI in the output because the network segment did not have a router or IPv6 server to provide network configuration instructions for the host. So this is what we've, this is what we've learned in the past. Uh, go in and configure it manually, right? No problem. But if you were to switch uh, and click on uh, the button for obtain an IPv6 address automatically, uh, instead of a, a manual configuration, and then you don't have an IPv6 router uh, set up to share um, IPv6 addresses, you are going to get an error message. Now, uh, the pound sign and the number at the end of the local link address is known as a zone ID or scope ID, and it is used for the operating system to allocate the LLA with specific interface. Now, um, DHCP v6 is defined in RFC 3315, and I just want to add one more thing. Um, you would, some of you are saying right now, well, heck, you got a local link address there, an FE80 link. But remember, that local link is automatically uh, created as soon as you connect a, a host to a network. 
it can only communicate, th that address can only communicate within the network. Uh, and it is, it is those IPv, ICMPv6 advertisements are only uh, used uh, to communicate between the different routers. They can, they can talk between each other using these local, I'm sorry, you know, hosts within a network uh, through switches and whatnot. Uh, can can talk to each other, but they can't leave the network. We need that IP address to be a global address to be able to get out of the network. Now, IPv6 global unicast address GUI assignment. Uh, by default, an IPv6 enabled router periodically sends IPv ICMPv6 router advertisements, which simplify how a host can dynamically create or acquire its IPv6 configuration. Now there's three, there's two different types, stateless and stateful. A host can dynamically be assigned a GUI using stateless and or stateful services. Stateless and stateful configuration modes use ICMP v6 router advertisement messages to suggest to the host how to create or acquire its IPv6 configuration. Although host operation systems follow the suggestions of the router advertisement, the actual decision is ultimately up to the host. Now, right off the bat on this page, it can get confusing. So I just wanna clarify that stateless, the reason why it's stateless is because if you use either one of these options, no device is tracking the assignment of IPv6 addresses. We'll talk about how uh, the host creates its own IP address, uh, but ultimately that IP address, the IPv6 address is not actually retained anywhere. It's stateless. There's no tracking of that address. Uh, it is verified that it's unique. I know I'll tell you how to do that in a little bit, but stateless means there's no list, right? Um, stateful means that there is a DHCP v6 server that is managing the assignment of IPv6 addresses uh, and the router advertisement that we'll talk about uh, later. Uh, the router advertisement will tell the host uh, what uh, 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 to go to a DHCP v6 server to get its address. And then it has to go and, and and get an address from a pool of addresses like DHCP v4. Uh, so remember, uh, Slack is stateless, right? And and uh, DHCP v6 is like DHCP v4, where somebody is tracking the addresses. The IPv4, they we don't talk about it as stateful, but it, I. Um, IPv4 is stateful in that it, somebody is tracking the IP addresses and reallocating them and dropping them back into the pool. And all of that is managed by a router or a server that is acting as a DHCP server. Same thing here, stateful means that it is being managed. Stateless means it is not being managed. Oh, it is not being directly managed uh, with uh, a pool of addresses. All right, let's keep going. We talk about each one of these. Uh, so how uh, does a router obtain an IPv6? Um, oh, I'm sorry, goo, it's not GUI, it's not GUI, darn it, it's not GUI, it's GUA. GUA is global unicast address, global unicast address. Man, I hate that. I, I even typed it in here, global unicast address, GUA. This is wrong. That's what was confusing. I'm going to fix this. Hang on a second. Um, I apologize for that. Let me stop my recording. Pause that so I can fix this because that's not right. Zoom. All right. So I apologize for that. I had GUI, G U I. Uh, I have been a Windows person since the 80s. Uh, so uh, that was probably a typo I made. Uh, but I'll give, I'll, 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 uh, I'm going to blame them. No, okay. So it's GUA, Global Unicast Address. That means an address. Remember, uh, IPv6 addresses, they generally don't use um, private addresses, uh, although you can um, ultimately have uh, private, ad is private addressing. It's not, it's not used for the same purpose. 
uh, that it's used in IPv4. So um, we, it's a, when you create an IPv6 address, uh, it is globally um, addressable, and we call that a GUA or a global unicast addressing. Uh, anyway, so I appreciate that. Hopefully, I didn't confuse anybody with that typo. So here we are. Uh, so there are three router advertisement messages. How a client um, obtains an IPv6 global unicast address depends on the settings in the router advertisement message. An ICMP v6 router advertisement messages includes the following three flags. The A flag. The A flag uh, indicates that the address auto configuration uh, signifies that to use stateless addressing, uh, auto configuration slack uh, to create an IPv6 address. Basically, everything is automatic. A is automatic, auto configuration automatic, whatever you want to remember it. Uh, but that's the A flag. The O flag means the other configuration flag signify, got, signifies the additional information is obtainable from the stateless DHCP v6 server. So the, I, so the host uh, is going to use some of the information it gets from the router uh, to be able to create its own address, but then it's going to, the host is then going to reach out to a server, and I'll show a picture of that in a moment, and the server is going to give it things like its domain and DNF server and uh, the other information that we learned uh, in IPv4, same thing. And then the M. Now, M is managed. These letters are really easy to remember. A is automatic. It stands for auto configuration. O is other. It means some is going to come from the router and the rest is going to come from the other configuration is going to come from the DHCP server. And then the M means that it is state full and everything is managed by the DHCP v6 server. So those flags are important. Now how they look, and I can't zoom in, I apologize because I, this is the last week I'm using my laptop. Uh, my motherboard came in, I'm very excited about that. And uh, maybe tomorrow I'll be putting my computer back together. And I'm very thrilled about that. And we will, won't have this massive mess on my desk right now to be able to do what I'm even doing. So anyway, so here, uh, the, uh, the uh, PC1 comes online, the host comes online and says, hey, I need a, uh, we're talking about IPv6. So it doesn't just put a global cut saying I need an IP address. Instead, it says, I need an R router advertisement from a router. Uh, from R1. So R1 gets the signal. Now R R1 replies with these flags. Now if just the A flag is set, if, or if the A flag is set, these other two would never be set if the A flag is set. Uh, if the A flag is set, it says, hey, here's everything you need. Go make your address. And I'll show you how it, you make your address on your own in a little bit using uh, the uh, using your MAC address and some other information I'll show you in a little bit. Here, the O flag is set in the A, meaning that you're going to use some of it's going to be automatic and some of it's going to be other. Uh, you're going to get that from the router. I guess the other could be set. And then here, uh, for managed, only the manage is set because none of it is automatic, right? So if you see manage, this is state full, and it means everything is going to be from the server. So the, the, the router just says, hey, I can't help you here. This is a state a state full uh, 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 network. You need to get your address from a pool that's handled by the DHCP6 server. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, so let's talk in depth about Slack first. That's the auto configuration. So Slack is the default on Cisco routers. Both the M flag and the O flag are set to zero in the router advertisement. This operation instructs the clients to use information in the router advertisement message only. The router advertisement message contains all of the address information I need. There is no other information available from the DHCP server. So what happens is uh, the first step, uh, the router solicitation goes from PC1. It goes to the router. The router responds with the, the M flag and the O flag uh, not set. The A flag is set, and uh, then the, the PC1 knows it's going to be creating its own address. 
Now, not every network has access to a DHCP server, uh, but every device in an IPv6 network needs a global unicast address. The Slack method enables hosts to create their own unique IPv6 global unicast address without ser the services of a DHCP v6 server. Slack is a stateless service, which means there is no server that maintains network addresses informa address information to know which IPv6 addresses are being used and which ones are available. Slack sends periodic ICMP v6 RA messages eh, every 200 seconds, providing addressing and other configuration information for hosts to auto configure their IPv6 address based on the information in the router advertisement. A host can also send a router solicitation message requesting an RA. So if it's going every 200 seconds, what is that? Uh, 6, 12, 18, 24, so it's like three and a half minutes. So if you plug in a host and it doesn't wanna wait three and a half minutes uh, to get a router advertisement from the uh, the local router, uh, then it will actually send out an RA saying, hey, I need a router advertisement. It, that's a router solicitation message. It's saying, hey, anybody out there got information for me? Slack can also be deployed as Slack only or Slack with DHCP v6. That's when the O flag is enabled. So this is, uh, we're talking, now what they did here was they're giving you a little bit more information. This is still stateless auto configuration. That's what Slack stands for, stateless SL auto address auto configuration, stateless address auto configuration. That's the only time you see this these words next to Slack. Uh, they just, from this point on, they just give you Slack. Um, so anyway, so uh, the client throws out a um, uh, uh, using FFO2, which is the all routers multicast address. Uh, it says, hey, I need a router av as an uh, advertisement from the router. And then the router says, here's your prefix, prefix length, and other information. So in this case, it's giving everything to it. It's giving the prefix and prefix length, which it will then use to create its own address and other information such as the DNS server, et cetera. Uh, and then uh, it sends uh, using the FFO2 uh, colon colon one, all nodes multicast. Now, uh, because, it, because, it, because ultimately this doesn't have an address yet, so it can't send a unicast address back to it because it doesn't have an address. So it has to send uh, back to all nodes. Now the command, remember, I've told you this five times already, maybe more. The command IPv6 unicast routing enables IPv6 and Slack operation on a router. If you do not put in the IPv6 unicast routing command, none of this will work. It won't work. Nothing you put in will work. You'll say, get all frustrated that you get a, a 10 on the lab, and it's because you forgot that command. Do not forget that command. And it's and matter of fact, you should be in a habit of every time you do anything with IPv6, start with IPv6 unicast routing. I know I do. Uh, if it's already enabled, it won't hurt a thing. Uh, PC1 sends a router solicitation method message. It doesn't want to wait the 200 seconds. Uh, to the all routers multicast address, which is a, the FF02 colon 2. FF02 colon 2 uh, is the all routers multicast address. Uh, it's saying, I need a router advertisement. That's this step here. I need a router advertisement. The, um, the router using the all nodes multicast address, which is FF02 colon colon 1, it says, here's your prefix, prefix length, uh, um, uh, and other information like, sub uh, like uh, domain name, et cetera. Uh, it sends uh, that back. Here's everything you need. And then R1 will respond with the router advertisement message that has the prefix and prefix. Oh, I just read that. PC1 uses this inf information to create its own IPv6 global unicast area address, GUA. It creates this interface using U EUI64 or randomly generates it. Now, I'll tell you the difference between EUI64 and random in just a moment. In today's world, it's random. 
In the old, uh, at the beginning, it used EUI, but I'll show you why that's not a good idea in just a minute. Now, the last step is PC1 must verify the address that it created is unique. And it does this by sending an ICMP v6 neighbor, neighbor, neighbor solicitation message. Um, and this is called basically um, a DAD um, duplicate address detection. And the uh, duplicate address um, uh, detection, uh, basically, that's what this is. It sends uh, a multicast address um, to all addresses saying, hey, world, hey, world, this is my address. Uh, and it does that. It sends it out to the world. It sends its own address to the world. And it says, am I out there? And if somebody responds, then it creates another address. If nobody responds, then it knows it has a unique address. Now, uh, so let's see what the the actual configuration looks like. So enable config T, make sure you do that IP unicast routing. I'm telling you, somebody in this class is going to get stuck on it. I would even put yellow in it, in your tech notebook that you're handwriting. Yellow, highlight it. Maybe put arrows and stuff at it to make sure you don't forget it. Uh, interf uh, go to the interface, IPv6 address, um, and then uh, put in the IPv6 address and then the prefix length, and then no shutdown. This is what we knew before. This is um, a basic IPv6 Slack configuration. And, um, and the example you give here, uh, go into uh, F00 and give it an IP address. Now, this is uh, the reason why they're talking, the, what they're on right now is they're on the router. They're not on the host. They're just configuring the router uh, to have an interface here, right? Don't don't configure. Uh, that's just the first step. You have to configure this interface on the router uh, before these guys are going to be able to talk to the router. That's all we've done here. This is the the configuration steps, and these are the actual address. We've done this before. This is nothing new. Okay, we're just configuring that interface right there. Now the next step. Um, this enables IPv6 routing. Uh, if this is not done, the RAs will not be sent. That's what that's what enable uh, IPv6 unicast routing does. That starts the RAs, right? And if you don't if you don't have the command IPv6 unicast routing, then those RAs, the router advertisements, are not sent every 200 seconds, and nothing happens in the network because you haven't enabled IPv6 unicast routing. All right, uh, let's see. All, that's all I was showing you right here. Uh, and then I also point out in this diagram, I, sh I wish I could zoom in, but in this diagram, each one of these uh, these devices, these hosts, each one of them has a MAC address, right? The MAC address is what we are going to use uh, in, the, um, in one of the methods, the EUI64 method, we are going to use the MAC address to create our unique address. So we're going to verify uh, we go to R1, make sure that is configured with an IPv6 uh, global unicast address and link local address. And then um, it includes or gives you a local address, which is created automatically. Uh, here is the address you entered. Here's the subnet. Uh, and then it, it, it joined. Uh, the FF02 colon colon one, uh, which is the um, all nodes um, multi, uh, multicast address. Now, <clears throat> the all routers group responds to the IPv6 unicast address FF02 colon colon two. Now, if you type show IPv6 interface G001 and then slash section joined, and you can see that. The, this router has joined uh, both the any nodes and the all, all nodes and the all routers uh, um, group. R1 will now begin to send RA messages every 200 seconds to all IPv6 all nodes multicast addresses. Now, um, the RA messages from R1 have the following flag set. A equals one informs the client to use the IPv6 GUI 
I'm sorry, GUA, global unicast address prefix in the router advertisement and dynamically create its own interface ID. If the O is set, then it's going to get some of the information uh, from the router advertisement. It's um, uh, the prefix in, and the, um, uh, the, the network and the prefix. Uh, and it's going to get other information from the server. Uh, oh, they're not on that. The zero, uh, o, uh, o, um, the O flag is set to zero, the M flag is set to zero. So it says, uh, use additional information from the router advertisement message, like the NS server, MTU size, uh, default gateway, et cetera. This is what it looks like. Uh, and then you can go into uh, your, uh, your, your PC on the, the host and type IP config, and you can see that it has been given uh, a IPv6 address, um, and it created that itself. Now, it created that itself, and we'll see in a minute how it did it, uh, but um, you will see, let's, I'll, I'm going to wait till it teaches, the PowerPoint explains uh, how it did, uh, how it created it um, using its MAC address, because it's in, it's in its own slide, so there's no reason for me to jump ahead. A router sends router advertisement messages every 200 seconds or when it receives a router solicitation message from a host. IPv6 enables enabled hosts wishing to obtain an IPv6 address information um, send an R router, router solicitation. I already said that uh, if it doesn't want to wait the three and a half minutes. It uh, uses uh, the multicast address FFO2 colon colon two, which is all routers. The figure the figure illustrates how the host initiates the Slack method. So in this case, the host says, hey, I need, um, I need, a, this is a router solicitation message, says it right there, router solicitation, hey, I need an address, um, and it sends it to, to uh, broadcast, it sends it to the broadcast, and then router R1 um, responds with a router advertisement message. Now, using Slack, a host acquires its 64-bit IPv6 subnet information from the router RA and must generate the, la the rest, the remaining 64-bit interface ID. Now, it does this in one of two methods. Today, Windows, Linux, and Mac OSs all use the random generation method uh, to create uh, their addresses. Uh, the EUI64 method, uh, the host creates an interface ID using its 48-bit MAC address uh, and inserts the hex value FFE, uh, FFFE in the middle of the address. So let's see if we can find that address over here. Here it is. Um, is do we see an FFFE? If you do not see an FFFE, then it used the random method. I do not see FFFE anywhere in this address. Uh, so this was a random way, uh, randomly created. Uh, but if you see FFFE, now you actually know the MAC address of the device. You, it, you take the 24 bits on the left of FFFE and the 24 bits on the right of FFFE, um, and put those two together, remove the FFFE, and then now you have the MAC address, which could be a security issue. That's why we, we don't use uh, EUI64 anymore. Now, some operating systems default to the randomly generated interface ID instead of the EUI64 method due to privacy concerns. And as I just explained, the MAC address is obvious if you're using EUI64. Slack host may use the following duplicate address detection, detection process uh, to ensure that the IPv6 global unicast address is unique. Once it's created, the host sends an ICMP v6 neighbor solicitation message with a spe 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 specially constructed solicitation node multicast address containing the last 24 bits of the IPv4, I'm sorry, IPv6 address to the host. If no other devices respond with a neighbor advertisement message, 
then the address is virtually guaranteed to be unique and can be used by the host. If a, the neighbor advertisement message received by the host, if a, a neighbor advertisement is received by the host, then the address is not unique and the host just regenerates randomly a new address. That is really not required because 64-bit interface ID provides 18 quintillion possibilities. Therefore, the chance of duplicate address is remote. However, the IETF, IETF recommends that DAD be used. Therefore, most operating systems perform DAD, not DAD. DAD it's duplicate address detection. It'll be easier for you to remember what it is if you don't say that. It's duplicate address, det uh, du duplicate address detection on all ICMP v6 unique addresses, regardless how the address is configured. 18 quintillion. Uh, so the chances of two different hosts in the same classroom, for example, uh, picking the same IPv6 address is pretty slim. A lot slimmer than winning the lottery. Now, that is Slack. Now, we also have to talk about DHCP v6. Now, DHCP v6 uh, is, uh, can be um, either stateless or stateful. It's stateful if the, um, if the uh, address uh, is this op bottom option where the manage flag is set. If only the other flag is set and the manage, whenever the manage flag is not set, this is stateless, this is stateful. So what happens is the uh, router solicitation is sent from the client um, out to the world. Uh, the uh, router responds with, if it's Slack only, then it just says, hey, here's everything you need. Use only this router. That's the first option, zero, zero, with a one in the A position. The second option, stateless DHCP, um, Slack and DHCP v6, use this router, advertise, router advertisement, but reach out to the server for everything else, okay? So that some of it is going to be created. Uh, for example, the address may be uh, created um, uh, automatically by the device, but go out and get the uh, the um, uh, the domain and the DNS server. Go to the DHCP server to get that information. That's what the other flag set. Other information is get is gotten, but um, not all of it. And then there's state full, and that's where it's managed. The 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 M flag is set. The other two are not set, and uh, uh, in that case, the router responds with a stateful DHCP v6. Uh, um, uh, it responds uh, use. It responds with a message just saying, "Go talk to the DHCP v6 server." It looks like this. So the um, the the PC reaches out to the to the router and says, "Hey, I need an IPv6 address." The I, the router responds back with a router advertisement, uh, and uh, the PC is then able to create uh, the, uh, the address completely. That's Slack. Now, DHCP v v6, uh, that is, uh, it solicits all DHCPs, um, I'm sorry. Uh, so the PC reaches out to R1, and R1 comes back uh, with a, uh, the router advertisement, and the router advertisement with an M flag set, uh, then uh, it says um, uh, request information, request unit. Okay. So three, so PC reaches out to the server, and then four, the server responds with an advertised unicast message to PC1 saying, uh, here is uh, what you need. And then uh, the PC1 requests um, uh, or information request back to the server for additional information, and then the DHCP v6 server responds as well. Okay. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you. And um, again, uh, so um, 
again, now we break it down a little bit smaller. So this one uh, is stateless DHCP v6. This is where the uh, manage flag is not set, uh, but the O flag is set. The A flag and the O flag are set. So stateless operation, what happens is the PC reaches out to R1 uh, with a router solicitation. R1 responds with uh, the O flag set, but the M flag not set. The A flag is also set, uh, but the important thing is the O flag is set. So now PC1 generates its own address, uh, creates its own address, and then reaches out to the DHCP v6 server and says, hey, I need other information and the server responds uh, with, uh, with the information uh, that uh, it needs uh, to be able to complete uh, its addressing. Note that the DHCP v6 server in this mode only provides configuration param parameters from the clients. It does not maintain a list of the IP address bindings. That is why it is called stateless. Now, uh, you can, um, to init now, so this is how you enable uh, uh, the O flag, because remember the A flag is the default, right? Automatic is the default, Slack is the default, right? So you don't need to configure Slack on the device. You just have to give it an IP address and bring it up. So here we are configuring the O flag and the command to configure the O flag is IP V6 neighbor discovery, that's ND other configuration flag. You can just type other, uh, or I think you can even just type O and tab. I'm not positive about that, but I'm pretty sure you can type O and tab. And then type end and then it, it goes out and you can go to show IP V6 interface a G001 begin at neighbor discovery, and it and it will give you uh, the information saying host use stateless auto configuration for addresses. Host use DHCP to obtain other information. Okay, so that's how you uh, that's the command. You will definitely want it in your tech notebook. That's the command how you set the other flag. Now stateful DHCP v6 operation. Uh, this is where the M flag is going to be set. So the way this works is the PC1 reaches out to the router. The router says, no, 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 the M flag is set. Um, so you need to get everything from your uh, server. So uh, with, when the PC receives that, uh, it, the router advertisement message says it must con contact the DHCP v6 server, and it does that. And then the, the PC and the server are going to chat back and forth um, to get uh, the um, all of the information the PC1 gets, including the, the uh, address itself. And again, this is state full, which means that uh, a list of addresses is maintained by the IPv6 address bindings. And you can see the commands by typing, uh, oh, well, first they, first they uh, tell you um, how to set it. So again, you go to the interface, and then again, it's really super easy, IPv6, neighbor discovery. Just gonna remember that neighbor discovery, the ND, right? And don't type neighbor discovery, it won't work. It's ND space manage configuration. I'm pretty sure you could type M tab and that sets the M tab, I mean the M flag and end. And then now you can do that same command we did a moment ago to show uh, in your, um, the, IP, the uh, interface, show IPv6 interface, go look at the interface. Uh, to see it, what the flags are set and begin with neighbor discovery. And then here you can see host use DHCP to obtain routable addressing. Let's go configure DHCP six uh, server on the router. What we just learned was how it communicates. Now we actually get, have to go uh, configure um, uh, some additional steps, including uh, the relay uh, agent. So Cisco IOS routers are powerful devices. In smaller networks, you do not have to have separate devices to have a DHCP v6 uh, client or relay agent. A Cisco IOS router can be configured to provide DHCP v6 server services. So, uh, and it can be either uh, stateless, uh, either configuration, uh, DHCP v6 or Slack or stateful, DHCP v6. 
six. Uh, it can also, the router can also be configured to be a client, just like we did in IPv4. We can set uh, the, the router to get its address by another router. In this case, we would configure this to be the client, uh, and we would put, guess what, IPv6 DHCP instead of giving it an address. An address? Uh, the router here is going to be the DHCP v6 server, and again, it can be in any one of the three configuration modes that we've already covered to this point. So let's talk about uh, configuring the router as a stateless. D now, this is a stateless uh, DHCP server. So we already set the flag, but there's more uh, to it. Um, Uh, to because it ha remember it has to be able to give some information. For example, it's got to give the domain name. So you have to set the server to have the domain name, which means you have some steps. So the first step is to enable unicast routing absolutely every time. You can do it multiple times just for the heck of it to get into practice. Uh, then configure a DHCP v6 pool. Uh, and the command is IPv6 DHCP pool, and then give it a name. It's the same command, less the V6 that we had for V4. V4 was IP DHCP pool, and then the, the name. Do the same thing with V6. Uh, and then configure the, the um, and then configure pool parameters, including the DNS server, uh, and then whatever that server address, and any other thing you want to put in there, like domain name, for example. Uh, and then configure uh, the, um, the flag. Uh, you see here they are configuring the other flag. Yep. Give you a moment to look at that. Uh, and uh, stateless uh, client. Now, this is where it is getting its address via um, the, uh, the it, it's getting its address here uh, via the client. And I misspoke earlier, uh, it isn't DHCP here. Um, IPv6 address auto configuration is what you have to type. Um, so um, I, it's the same beginning, IPv6 address instead of IPv4 address. But instead of typing DHCP, you type auto configuration. Um, auto configuration is a much better command. They should backfit um, IPv4 with that command. It's so much easier to remember than DHCP. Either one of them are easy to remember. Uh, and if you forget it, if you try um, DHCP there for IPv6 and it doesn't work, uh, just put a question mark there. And auto configuration is one of the few things that you'll get there. Uh, you'll also get, obviously, um, IP address and prefix is one because you could statically configure this. This is when you want it to auto configure using the DHCP client over here. Verify stateless DHCP v6, uh, show IP DHCP pool, and then you can see what the name of the pool is and you can see if it's got any active clients. Um, show running configuration, uh, that command uh, we've seen before, uh, show IPv6 interfaces, G00, uh, G01, and you can see uh, that it's stateless address auto configuration is enabled, global unicast addresses, one has been as, uh, assigned. Um, no, nobody's keeping track of it, so it's not going to show you the assigned addresses. That is the, the, um, prefix that you are going to use, uh, that you are going to send out to the world to, to, to auto configure their own addresses. And then um, it shows the default router, that's the gateway. Uh, here uh, we see uh, to, to troubleshoot, if there's a problem, you might have to de use the debug command, a DP, debug IPv6 DHCP detail, and you can see um, that you'll get commands like this, uh, IPv6 using interface pool, IPv6 stateful. Oh, it's stateful, look at that. If we're not expecting it to be stateful, we've got a problem, right? Um, and uh, I created a binding. Uh, remember, we got a binding, that means it's uh, also um, DH, it's a stateful 
uh, because uh, we don't have a record of addressing in um, stateful, I'm sorry, in stateless, um, either Slack or IPv6 uh, stateless. Okay, uh, don't forget uh, configuring the router as a stateful DHCP server. Now this goes back and looks an awful lot like what we did uh, a moment ago. Um, we have to uh, set uh, the IPv6 unicast routing, do it again and again and again, practice. Uh, then give it a name, the IPv6 DHC pool, and then you have to, um, it'll go into interface configuration mode, and then you have to configure the pool parameters. So you have to give it the um, address prefix and the prefix length, uh, the DNS server address and the domain name, uh, and then there are some optional ones as well. And then configure uh, the interface itself. This binds the pool to the address. So IPv6 DHCP server pool, to give it a name, and then set uh, the ND uh, managed flag, the M flag, uh, so that it knows it has to keep track of addresses. Configuring a router as a stateful DHCP uh, client. Now, here's that IPv6 address, and you're setting it right here, and you're saying, hey, um, uh, we have to enable IP, uh, IPv6. You have to enable IPv6 in this on this side, this network, right? Otherwise, it's not going to work. And then, uh, and then you just say IPv6 address DHCP. Hmm, that's the address that I thought, oh, you know what? Uh, I was wrong back here. I was correct, as I thought, but when I said auto configuration, that's setting the A flag. That's setting the A flag. Let's see if you guys are in the chat room were smart and knew that. Um, no, you didn't say anything. You didn't catch it. All right. The brilliant students in my class, they are brilliant, actually. Uh, they uh, didn't catch it, uh, but auto configuration, you're setting the A flag here with the um, auto configuration. Um, hmm. Enable address auto configuration. What is the difference between this one and this one? This stateful client, that's a stateful client, and this is a stateless client. Aha, aha. So if you are, conf if you are connecting to a router, I'm sorry, a server, and the server is stateless, and it's letting you create your own address uh, on this interface, uh, then you use IPv6 address auto configuration. That makes that so makes sense with the A flag. But if you are just accepting uh, your address uh, from the server, then this is uh, IPv6 address DHCP saying, just give me an address and I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to wait for you to give me one. All right, so that makes sense. I uh, apologize for that little confusion there. Like I said, there are more conf commands, and this is uh, the probably the more challenging uh, presentation. And kind of ultimately, stateful, stateless, three different um, configurations. That's not really hard, but then trying to keep them all organized. I'll be honest, it's a little bit challenging. This is where you got to be very thankful that I let you have a tech notebook. Uh, but you do need to know. Uh, when you go into your uh, CCN, CCNA exam and out and you get a job someplace, um, you, you're going to need to know these commands. So uh, don't just rely on your notebook. Try to do the best you can to memorize. As I say that, and I've given this presentation at least uh, nine times, <laughs> and I still got confused there. It's all right. We figured it out, and I appreciate your patience. Now, uh, verifying stateful DHCPv6, 
uh, show IPv6 state uh, DHCP pool. And then you can see the pool that's been created. You can see the, the, the prefix. Uh, and you can see that two have been two are currently in use. Uh, you can see the server and the domain name, and you can see there are two active clients. Remember, this is state full, so you will see active clients because it is keeping track of those addresses. Um, and uh, you can use the following commands to verify stateful DHCP. You can also go to shell IPv6 interface G01. And you can see uh, that you have uh, created, what do we got here? We can, um, uh, look, we, we have duplicate address detection is enabled, that there's been one duplicate address detection attempt. Uh, we can see uh, that the, um, uh, it's in groups. Um, and uh, it's up and up. And yeah, here we can go and we can see the bindings. This is a useful command because we can actually see those addresses. Remember, only state full keeps track of the addresses. So if you want to see what addresses have been bound, you go to binding. So show IPv6 DHCP. If you forget the word binding, just use the question mark. And uh, here you can see. Uh, that this is one um, address that has been assigned, and then oh, here's here's the here's the actual address that's been assigned. Here's the address, and this is the, the local link, and then here's the address that's been assigned, and it has a pre pre a preferred lifetime uh, eighty six four hundred uh, valid lifetime set one seventy two eight hundred. I actually have that someplace on a, a slide that comes up. I think this is, um, it's on the next slide. Let me just go there. Uh, so um, that number, uh, the, um, the valid uh, range for how long a pre preferred lifetime, that argument specifies the amount of time in seconds that the, pre the specified IPv6 prefix is advertised as being preferred. Uh, valid ranges go from zero to four billion seconds. And I went ahead and Google that and that uh, did the calculation and that's over 100 years. So for the majority of us, uh, that is going to be your lifetime, my lifetime. Uh, the maximum value represents infinity, which can also be specified with infinite. The default is 604,800. Uh, which is seven days uh, worth of seconds. That is uh, the maximum value rep uh, representing infinity. You can type, oh, uh, the default, wait, the default is 604800, which is seven days. That's the default IPv6 um, uh, address. But you generally will find that it has been set to infinite, infinity. Um, and uh, because uh, that is, um, that is, uh, they, well, I, there's so many IPv6 addresses, you don't have to worry about it, right? Give, give a student an address every, and if he comes on campus once in his lifetime, who cares, right? And give every student that comes online. Give it to every person that goes to a football game and fills the stadium. You could go 100 years of doing that and still not run out of addresses. So don't, don't worry about that. Now, valid lifetime is the length of time in seconds. An address remains in the valid state, uh, the time until invalidation. Um, the valid lifetime must be greater than or equal to the preferred lifetime. When the valid lifetime expires, the address becomes invalid. And then I have this, I, I, that, I found that all confusing when I went through this. So I went ahead and found uh, a diagram inside of our content and I threw this in here just so you can see this is this is absolutely the same as IPv6, uh, but just um, different words. So uh, remember, IPv6 has a specific time frame before it has to give up the address and then find another address. Well, in IPv6, it has a preferred address, um, and then it has a, a, a depreciated period of time. So this is the end of the preferred lifetime. And then this is the valid lifetime, which includes both the preferred and this deprecated. Uh, yeah, that's deprecated, yeah. 
period of time. Now, we also need DHCP relay agents. If the DHCP v6 server is located on a different network than the client, the router can be configured as a DHCP v6 relay agent. The configuration of a DHCP v6 relay, relay agent is similar to the configuration of IPv4 router. Guess what? We, we put it on, uh, let's see, let's just go to the next slide. We put it on this interface right here uh, to be able to allow this PC to be able to get out of this network to be able to get to this server, right? Here's the DHCP v6 server, and it is outside of this network. This is the cafe A, this is the cafe one network. That is, well, A being one zero, right? And this is one. And so um, the two different networks. And then it, so it's to get out of this network, if this is not the server, uh, the IPv6 server, I mean, the DHCP v6 server, uh, then it needs a helper address right there. And then it will be able, the router can then send a um, unicast message to the server requesting that information on behalf of PC1. Now the command uh, is IPv6 DHCP relay destination, and then whatever that destination address is. Again, use your question marks, right? You know it's a relay, it's IPv6 DHCP relay, put a question mark in there, and it'll be obvious at that point, destination, and then give it an address uh, of the server, right? You're telling it, the router, where the survey, server is. And then to check that, uh, do a show IPv6 inter DHCP interfaces G0 slash zero, and you will see that uh, that interface is in relay mode. Now, um, <clears throat> configuring, configuring a DHCP v6 relay agent when uh, a, a local link address is the next hop. The DHCP v6 server address and the egress interfaces are required uh, to reach the server. The egress interface is only required when the next hop address is a local link address. So we talked about this before when we talked about configuring static addresses and, um, and having a, you can either uh, set the interface being the uh, exit interface, the next hop IP, the exit interface, the next hop IP address, or both for fully specified address. That's all they're saying here. If the next hop IP address is a local link address, you also have to include the, I think we're going the other way. This is the server, that's the relay agent. Uh, oh, and there's FE80, uh, 0102. I think that's what that says. No, it's 03. And then um, it's saying, if you're going to use this next hop IP address to get to the server, uh, you also have to use the exit interface of G000. And then you can see it lit written here. Uh, you go into this interface and you configure IP DHCP relay destination is this address, this, this FE80 colon colon three, uh, but then you also have to use the exit interface here. Because remember, those local link addresses, the LLAs, those local link addresses are the, can be duplicated. So the, the R1 might have three different routers, all with an FE80 colon colon three. Verifying the DHCP v6 relay agent. The DHCP6 relay agent is operational with the show IPv6 DHCP interface and the show IPv6 DHCP binding command. Uh, and uh, when you show uh, the, hang on just a second. So they give you a couple commands here, show IPv6 DHCP interface. Uh, it says that it's in relay mode. Uh, you're on R1, right? and then um, show IPv6 DHCP binding. And then uh, you can see that it is um, giving you some information about the address and the preferred lifetime. This would be stateful, obviously. And the, oh, I'm gonna click over here. And um, 
verify the DHCP v6 is uh, is working on a host uh, on a host it is working I should say uh, verify window host receiving IPv6 in, uh, information with an IPv you can go to IPv uh, I'm sorry IP config and then uh, what you see here uh, is the address um, remember earlier I told you uh, you would see uh, FFFE in the middle of the MAC address. So here is uh, 24 bits on the right hand side, 24 bits on the left hand side, uh, and that's a 48 bits of a MAC address. And then FFFE in the middle, that's EUI 64. If you want to see if it's EUI 64, look for that FFFE in the middle. Now, it's also something you also change the second bit by adding, you, know, you flip the seventh or eighth bit. I forget what it is. Maybe it's on the next page. No, I don't think so. Um, there's another step you have to flip a bit. And again, I, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out why you flip that bit. And ultimately, it's just legacy. It was important at the beginning, uh, but it's no longer important uh, other than the fact that we still do it. Uh, so you have to do it. So that second that second bit is um, the seventh bit. Maybe somebody can put that in the chat room. Uh, is flipped, um, but uh, the 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 tip off is the FFA FFFE in the middle. Okay, then you know uh, then it used the EUI sixty four method. Now again, just a quick summary. Remember, this is we're talking about dynamic uh, global unicast address assignments. There's two different ways: state less, where nobody tracks the address, and then state full. Now, when you go to stateless, there's two different stateless options. We have Slack only, where the, uh, the router advertisement has all of the information you need. And then there's uh, the other flag is set, and that's where Slack um, also needs the DHCP server to give some of the information. So the address is created uh, using random or, D or the uh, EUI 64, and then the rest of it, things like the domain name and uh, the, uh, the um, DNS server and stuff uh, is given to you by the, uh, the stateless DHCP v6 server. And again, that's the O flag set. Stateful, it only has one um, option, and that is a DHCP version 6. That's the M flag is set, and everything is handed down to a, a host that's coming online. Everything is handed on down uh, by uh, the DHCP server. So hopefully that's somewhat clear. And um, that's it. That's what we've been talking about for the last hour and five minutes. Uh, the uh, you're going to do a lab on this, configuring DHCP v6 on a uh, in NetLab, and you'll get a chance to play with all of these. And that is my presentation for module eight. So hopefully uh, you're not too confused. It is challenging. I told you up front, uh, not, not too difficult. Make sure you have good notes um, on, your, uh, on your tech handbook, which way to use the flags, how to set the flags, uh, et cetera. Uh, and that will help you uh, to uh, make um, uh, make your your commands, your configuration commands, and, and answer all those multiple choice questions that you know are coming your way, right? So that is my presentation for tonight. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. Uh, as I said, we'd be done by 8.30. I got five more minutes to wrap this up, but I'll be kind. I'll wrap it up right now. My name is Don LaFon. If you get any questions, ask those questions inside of our help discussion forum, and your fellow students and I will help you with those. Um, and if you're live with me now and you have a question, by all means, uh, ask that question uh, now, but not you that are watching me on recordings. I'm going to stop the presentation. So uh, have a great evening, uh, and I'll see you in a week. Oh, actually, I'll see you in two weeks because next week uh, is next week is uh, spring break. Yay! If you're in 2021 spring, next week is my favorite week of the semester. Anyways, have a great week and a great spring break. Thank you.